Helen Hayes MacArthur was an American actress whose career spanned almost 80 years. She eventually garnered the nickname First Lady of American Theatre and was one of 12 people who have won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar and a Tony Award. Hayes also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, America's highest civilian honor, from President Ronald Reagan in 1986. Hayes is considered to be one of the greatest American stage actresses of the century. In 1988, she was awarded the National Medal of Arts. The annual Helen Hayes Awards, which have recognized excellence in professional theater in the greater Washington, D.C. area since 1984, are her namesake. In 1955 the former Fulton Theater on 46th Street in New York City's Broadway Theater District was renamed the Helen Hayes Theater. When that venue was torn down in 1982, the nearby Little Theater was renamed in her honor. Early life, Helen Hayes was born in Washington, D.C. on October 10, 1900. Her mother, Catherine Estelle, or Essie, was an aspiring actress who worked in touring companies. Her father, Francis Van Arnhem Brown, worked at a number of jobs, including as a clerk at the Washington Patent Office and as a manager and salesman for a wholesale butcher. Hayes' Irish Catholic maternal grandparents emigrated from Ireland during the Irish potato famine. Hayes began a stage career at an early age. She said her stage debut was as a five-year-old singer at Washington's Bielisko Theatre by the age of ten. She had made a short film called Jean and the Calico Doll, but moved to Hollywood only when her husband, playwright Charles MacArthur, signed a Hollywood deal. She attended the Academy of the Sacred Heart Convent in Washington and graduated in 1917. Career Her sound film debut was The Sin of Madeleine Claudette, for which she won the Academy Award for Best Actress. She followed that with starring roles in Arrowsmith, A Farewell to Arms, The White Sister, What Every Woman Knows and Vanessa, Her Love Story. However, Hayes did not prefer the medium to the stage. Hayes eventually returned to Broadway in 1935, where for three years she played the title role in the Gilbert Miller production of Victoria Regina, with Vincent Price as Prince Albert, first at the Broadhurst Theatre and later at the Martin Beck Theatre. In 1953, she was the first ever recipient of the Sarah Siddons Award for her work in Chicago Theatre, repeating as the winner in 1969. She returned to Hollywood in the 1950s, and her film star began to rise. She starred in My Son John and Anastasia, and won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role as an elderly stowaway in the disaster film Airport. She followed that up with several roles in Disney films such as Herbie Rides Again, One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing and Candle Shoe. Her performance in Anastasia was considered a comeback a year she had suspended her career for several years due to the death of her daughter Mary, and her husband's failing health. In 1955 the Fulton Theatre was renamed for her. However, business interests in the 1980s wished to raise that theatre and four others to construct a large hotel that included the Marquis Theatre. To accomplish raising this theatre and three others, as well as the Hotel Astor, the business interests received Hayes' consent to raise the theatre named for her, even though she had no ownership interest in the buildings. Parts of the original Helen Hayes Theatre on Broadway were used to construct the Shakespeare Center on the upper west of Manhattan, which Hayes dedicated with Joseph Papp in 1982. In 1983 the Little Theatre on West 45th Street was renamed the Helen Hayes Theatre in her honor, as was a theatre in Yak, which has since been renamed the Riverspace Arts Center. In early 2014 the site was refurbished and styled by interior designer Dawn Hershko and reopened as the Playhouse Market a quaint restaurant and gourmet deli. It is unclear when or by whom Hayes was called the First Lady of the Theatre. Her friend, actress Catherine Cornell also held that title, and Eat thought that the other deserved it. One critic said that Cornell played every queen as though she were a woman, whereas Hayes played every woman as though she were a queen. In 1982, with friend Lady Bird Johnson, she founded the National Wildflower Research Center, now the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center in Austin, Texas. The center protects and preserves North America's native plants and natural landscapes. The Helen Hayes Award for Theater in the Washington, D.C. area is named in her honor.
She has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6220 Hollywood Boulevard. Helen Hayes is also a member of the American Theatre Hall of Fame. Personal life Hayes was a Catholic and a pro business Republican who attended many Republican national conventions, but she was not as politically vocal as some others in the Hollywood community of that time. Hayes wrote three memoirs A Gift of Joy, On Reflection, and My Life in Three Acts. Some of the themes in these books including her return to Roman Catholicism and the death of her only daughter, Mary, who is an aspiring actress, from polio at the age of 19. Hayes's adopted son, James MacArthur, went on to a career in acting, starring in Hawaii 5 on television. Hayes was hospitalized a number of times for her asthma condition, which was aggravated by stage dust, forcing her to retire from legitimate theater in 1971 at age 71. Her last Broadway show was a 1970 revival of Harvey, in which she co-starred with James Stewart. Clive Barnes wrote she epitomizes fluster charm almost as if it were a style of acting. She is one of those actors. Where to watch how she is doing something is almost as pleasurable as what she is doing. She spent most of her last years writing and raising money for organizations that fight asthma. Philanthropy Hayes was a generous donor of time and money to a number of causes and organizations, including the Riverside Shakespeare Company of New York City. Along with Mildred Natwick, she became a founding member of the company's board of advisors in 1981. She was also on the board of directors for the Greater New York Council of the Girl Scouts of the USA during the early 1970s. In 1982, Hayes dedicated Riverside to the Shakespeare Center with New York theater producer, Joseph Papp, and in 1985 returned to the New York stage in a benefit reading for the company with a reading of A Christmas Carol with the late Raoul Julia, Len Carrier, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, Carol Shelley, Celeste Holm and Harold Scott, directed by W. Stuart McDowell. The next year Hayes performed a second benefit for the Riverside Shakespeare Company, this time at the Marquis Theatre the construction of which had been made possible by the demolition of the Helen Hayes Theatre three years before. The production featured Rex Smith, Ossie Davis and F. Murray Abraham, produced by McDowell and directed by Robert Small, with Hayes narrating the performance. Helen Hayes Hospital, according to her daughter-in-law, H. B. MacArthur, Hayes took the most pride, however, in her philanthropic work with Helen Hayes Rehabilitation Hospital located in West Haverstraw. NY she was extremely proud of the strides the hospital made towards the rehabilitation of people with disabilities. Hayes became involved with the hospital in the 1940s and was named to the Board of Visitors in 1944. In 1974, the hospital was renamed in her honor. She served on the Helen Hayes Hospital Board of Visitors for 49 years, until her death in 1993. In that time, she advocated tirelessly for the hospital and successfully led a fight to prevent the relocation of the facility to Albany in the 1960s. In the 1970s, she was instrumental in the successful lobbying for funding to transform the hospital into a state-of-the-art facility. Hayes also contributed her enthusiastic support to hospital events and fundraising efforts, including handing out diplomas to the children upon graduation when the hospital was still a pediatric care facility. She also faithfully attended the hospital's annual classic race, leading the race by riding in a classic car and handing out awards to runners, hand cyclists and wheelchair racers, and generously offering the use of her home Pretty Penny for a dinner to launch the hospital's endowment fund. Death Hayes died on St. Patrick's Day, 1993 from congestive heart failure in Yak, New York. Lillian Gish had designated Hayes as beneficiary of her estate, but Hayes survived her by less than a month. Hayes was interred in the Oak Hill Cemetery, Nyack, New York. In 2011, she was honored with a U.S. postage stamp. Body of work. Equals stage and awards equals. Equals filmography and awards equals. Equals television appearances and awards equals. Equals other awards equals. In 1979, the Super Sisters trading card set was produced and distributed. One of the cards featured Hayes's name and picture. In 1983, Hayes received the award for greatest public service benefiting the disadvantaged, an award given out annually by Jefferson Awards. See also, 
List of persons who have won Academy, Emmy, Grammy, and Tony Awards. Notes. References. Mosul, Tad and Macy, Gertrude. Leading Lady, The World and Theatre of Catherine Cornell, 1978, Little, Brown and Company, Boston, ISBN 0-316-58537-8, Murphy, Don B. and Moore, Stephen. Helen Hayes. A Bio-Bibliography. External links, Helen Hayes at the Internet Movie Database, Helen Hayes at the Internet Broadway Database. Helen Hayes at the Internet of Broadway Database, Official Site, Tribute Site, Helen Hayes Papers, 1817-1963, held by the Billy Rose Theatre Division, New York Public Library for the Performing Arts, American Masters, The Helen Hayes Awards, Photographs of Helen Hayes, Lifetime Honors, National Medal of Arts.